to Ropa or not to Ropa? That is the question I'm going to try to answer in this video with a brief review, offer you some alternatives to the DLC, and some friendly advice. Even if you already own the Ropa DLC, you're going to get some good useful information out of this video, so stay tuned for this and much more right after these messages. The Ropa DLC is available on all platforms for the same price, $7.99 here in America, and that's a small amount to pay for some, but for others, that's giving up lunch for a day or two in order to be able to purchase and enjoy this pack of equipment. So what if you want to have a Ropa for free or the look of a Ropa? Well, I'm going to show you some excellent alternatives and I'm going to link every one of them down in the description that you see here in the video today. So even if you have the DLC already, there's some pieces I'm going to show you today that you still may want to add to your folder. So I'd like to give a big thank you and shout out to my good friend, Dunk Zorley. He purchased this DLC pack for me and gave it to me as a gift on Steam. So thank you very, very much, Dunk Zorley. Very generous of you. Please follow the link in my description to his channel. He does great Let's Plays and excellent mod reviews. You won't be disappointed. The first thing I'd like to address is the Ropa header trailer. It has this mortise and tenon type mounting system where these uh, clamps lock onto these pegs and it kind of sits side saddle. And if you pull away too quickly, it will fall on the ground. And that is unlike the Homer trailer, which the header has its own little area that it sits in nice and stable. And I've never had a problem with that. So the body styles versus the Tiger and the Terados are noticeably different when you look at them close up. But is that enough to warrant the money to spend on the DLC when they do the same job at its core function? I mean, it sure does look pretty, with the exception of the inside. I think it's good or okay, but I think the textures used in the Ropa cab are a little blurry and kind of jagged. Whereas I think they took a bit more time and care when they did the Homer interior. It's much more crisp and the, um, the cab is more open with respects to viewing angles. So let's have a listen to the new motor sounds. Let's have a quick peek inside the Homer cab. And as you see here, you have much more viewing real estate through the windows. And the textures, I think, are a bit more crisp and more clean. And I think just overall, they did a nicer job inside of the Homer. With both models, the outsides are flawless, as you always come to expect with Giants. And I'm really kind of being picky. You really can't complain. As far as the header goes, as you see in that little picture, you're going to need the header trailer because if you try to drive with it folded, it's going to block your view totally. So there's the Terra Phalus Eco 2, and here's the Ropa Mouse. They both do one thing, they pick up beats. But the real value is this machine here, the Noaro Mouse. It does a whole host of uh, grain, silage, everything. One thing it's not capable of doing, however, is picking up swath rows. So hay, grass, straw, in a swath it won't get it, but it will pick it up loosely. So I think this alone is worth the $7.99 in the entire pack. And I'm going to do a total wrap-up of my overall opinion and give you some good advice 
uh, towards the end of the video, so stick with me here. <laughs> All right, so let's have a little peekaboo inside the Noiro mouse here. And as you see, the interior is comparable to that of the Ropa Tiger Beat Harvester, and it's the same thing in the Ropa Mouse 5. So it's good, it's just not great. Compared to here, the Terrafalus Eco 2, I still think the interior is a bit more crisp and you have a lot more um, viewing angles out of the cab. So what about some other options if you really can't afford to or just don't want to purchase the Ropa DLC? Well, how about the Homer Pack by Stevie? You've got a Terra Felis that picks up a whole bunch of different things and you've got the Homer itself bead harvester which you can color any color in Giant's palette. As you see there, I did the yellow and then I did this one, the color of pickled beets so I can uh, differentiate it from my other harvester that I use by Stevie. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the man has also given us a potato harvester version of it. Thank the Lord. Now I don't have to use that abomination, the uh, Grim Tektron. <laughs> really don't care for that. It's very unstable and wobbly on slopey, bumpy terrain. And I really don't understand the whole three-wheeled setup there. It kind of makes it unstable from the get-go. Oh, and it is pronounced Grim. I did go to the manufacturer's website and get the pronunciation. But we also have the Keeler 2 by Ropa. This is pretty much identical to its counterpart right over here, the Grim version of that on the left there. But the difference with this one is you don't need a hallum topper on the front of your tractor. This takes off the tops and scoops up the potatoes all in one fell swoop. Now, the problem I do have with this one is these little deals right here, these little cylinders. The crops have to go through the middle of those cylinders, like two fingers. And I find that if you're using a tractor with wide tires, the harvester doesn't swing out far enough to um, accommodate for that. The second problem is, what I'm wondering is, if the potatoes aren't going in between those, that opening in between the two cylinders, is it deleting what it's hitting? So I find to use the row crop tires, it worked out pretty well. But like I said, I'd have to do a further experiment to see just if it was deleting what it's touching on the sides. And then our obligatory Tektron demonstration here. Here it is harvesting the potatoes. It really isn't that terrible a machine. Like I said, I do find it um, a bit unwieldy especially on slopey terrain or bumpy terrain and the beet harvester version uh, the same thing but it does have a great viewing angle from inside the cab the inside of the cab was done also very nicely as well as the outside and i uh, used it into the ground on fs15 i will say that before i found stevie stuff and there it is the potato harvester in action works just like the beet harvester and I really enjoy using this a lot. So here we have Stevie's Terradoss Homer Beat Harvester in Ropa Yellow. And then we have the Homer Header Trailer in Ropa Yellow. That's part of Chrisu 70's Ropa Pack with the Panther there on the right. And then in the middle is his version of the Tiger 6. And then on the end there is Giant's Tiger 6. But as you can see, they all look pretty darn similar. And Chrisu's model even has the same molded slope roof. So again, at the end of the day, all three machines perform the same core function, beet harvesting. The only difference here is two are free and one is $8. <laughs> now, I certainly feel that if you have the eight bucks to throw to the four winds and you're just looking for a change, this is a very nice DLC and it's worth the buy. But if you're a bit on a budget, then you're gonna wanna maybe wait because don't forget, FS19 is coming in October and they're gonna have this stuff as standard in-game equipment. So you're gonna get it for nothing in a few short months anyway. So if you can wait a while, you'll benefit by that. Also, another gripe that I have is the Homer DLC came out in March of 2016. That was our post-Platinum DLC. Here we are, March 2018. We're here again with our post-Platinum DLC, our next DLC after this Platinum. And it's more beat equipment again. 
So we waited over two years and we just get more sugar beet equipment. I think there was so many other things they could have done. And I know that they're probably obligated by contract in licensing agreements because, you know, Ropa bought Homer or vice versa. They merged. So they probably have to feature that new line of equipment. I'm not really sure about it all. But from a player's standpoint, uh, you know, there's enough mods out there, as you see, to make up the gap. And as long as those mods are available, there's a lot of people that are not going to bother with this pack. But I personally think, again, that the Noaro mouse alone is worth the money uh, because of the increased functionality. And I didn't get into very much detail about that because I have prepared some charts for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go into every living last detail with these charts. I'm just going to point out some quick highlights on them. You can pause the screen and take a screenshot. That way you can zoom in a bit because I know if you're looking on a small device, you're not going to be able to see the print. So you can snapshot those and uh, zoom in on them if you'd like to scrutinize more further. All right, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. So I'm just going to briefly go through these on the quick and dirty. I have three charts to show you. So at any point during this portion of the video, uh, you can pause on each screen and take a snapshot. And that way you can zoom in and reference it better. So this obviously is the beet harvesting page. And across the top is the two Giants versions. And then over to the far right is the Stevie version. And as you see there, your choice of colors. He's got a 60,000 capacity. All of them across the board have a four meter working with the Giants Homer and Giants uh, Ropa. Uh, the Ropa has 43,000 capacity and 45, I believe, on the Giants. Down across the bottom is the uh, Ropa mods from Krisu 70 and the Panther, which is the smaller one that has the standard Homer header, which is a four meter working with. And then the Ropa Tiger, his version has a 5.5 meter header. So you'll benefit from the extra working with on that one. Okay, so the Giants Trailed Potato Solution across the top left there. The Ropa Trailed Potato Harvester is $120,000. It has a 2 meter working width and a $200 a day maintenance tag. And then you have the Grim SE260 and the KS75-4 together is $121,000. Same working width. $10 a day less on maintenance, and it seems that you might think that you're going to save $1,000 by purchasing the Ropa over the Grim together. Well, you're actually not, because the Ropa has that extra $10 a day maintenance fee over a course of 100 days that that thing sits on your farm, it's going to cost you that $1,000. So you're not saving anything buying the other machine, <laughs> essentially. On the bottom right, we have the Stevie Homer Potato Solution. The harvester and the header together cost you $340,000, which comes in a lot less over the uh, Tektron at $429,000. Stevie's mod, of course, you have your choice of colors, so it's cheaper and it's more efficient. And last but not least, we have the Terrafellus and the Ropa Noaro Mouse. So across the top, starting from the left, is the Mouse 5 which is the successor of the Terra Phalus 2 Eco in the middle. They're identical, with the exception of the Ropa Mouse 5 has a 10.2 meter working width over the 9.5 on the Terra Phalus Eco. The Ropa Noaro Mouse picks up all the grains, fertilizers, mixed ration, chaff, silage, and wood chips. Now down in the bottom right corner, the Stevie model, your choice of colors, and it picks up the potatoes and the beets together. And then it does wood chips, silage, chaff, mixed ration, and then hay, strong grass, and all of that. And again, if they're in a swath row, it's not going to pick it up. They have to be loose in a heap. So in some ways, the Stevie version of this mod might fall a little short over the Ropa mouse because the Ropa picks up all the grains and everything else, but it doesn't pick up the root crops or the hay, straw, and grass. So my advice to you is, if you're not getting the Ropa pack, still download the stevie pack you can use a conveyor even there's snowblower mods that pick up everything there's a lot of different solutions out there to make up for that but if you already own the ropa pack again still download the stevie pack because you're going to have the ability of picking up both the sugar beets and potatoes with one unit instead of two separate units. So it's still a good benefit to your farm. Now, this is not for tiny tight farms either. These machines, as you saw in the video, when they're opened up, they take up a lot of real estate. 
So you want to have plenty of room for the machine to maneuver while it's unfolded, along with the tractor that's going to be there with the tipper that you're going to load into. So there's a bit to consider there. So I hope this video has helped you out a little bit and maybe enlightened you a little bit or put your mind at ease and given you some other options. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. I'm always interested in chatting with you and finding out your feedback. And I hope you enjoy these mods and the DLC if you bought it. This has been Eustace Farmer, and I'd like to thank you very much for tuning in. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and tap that alert bell. Also, there's a thumbs up button right under your screen. Please tap that so I know you enjoyed the video. If you didn't like the video, there's another button. Feel free to tap that one if you're a big poop head. Until we meet again, take great care of yourself, okay? And bye for now.